we've got some pretty big things going on in the commercial real estate sector because people are kind of kidding around. A lot of people I know, they don't really care too much about the commercial real estate. They're like, oh, offices are kind of empty? So what? What does this have to affect my house that I recently bought? You know, how is this going to be affecting me? Well, it will because it's kind of getting to the point where it's very dangerous. you got very iconic cities in the U.S. like San Francisco, Los Angeles, Denver, Seattle, New York City, all experiencing the highest vacancies in decades for commercial real estate. Like even in 2008, okay, with a massive housing bust, commercial real estate was still worth a lot of money because – Despite unemployment going to 10%, we still had a lot of companies renting offices. And as the economy improved and unemployment went down, more and more people started going to offices. In fact, there was a massive office boom after 2008 because of that. So what's happening right now is very scary because if you look at this, you have values for office, retail, and apartment buildings already down 11%, but mostly for office and retail. Morgan Stanley thinks values could crash 40% and this will cause a massive problem for the U.S. economy because the commercial real estate sector is worth $20 trillion at the peak of 2021 and a negative 40% means it'll only be worth about $11 to $12 trillion. That's about like $8 to $9 trillion knocked off the commercial real estate sector. This will affect a lot of banks, bank stocks, and the reason why a lot of small banking stocks are not going up as well as the NASDAQ is because they have a lot of bad commercial loans. There's already analysts out there saying that there's 300 to 400 small banks in the U.S. out of 4,000 that have a crap ton of money in commercial real estate. And even Charlie Munger is warning a potential banking collapse in the near future, like one to three years because of commercial real estate. Right now, there is no recovery for commercial real estate like before. Like during 08, commercial real estate was going down in value, but it immediately shot up because there wasn't remote or online working. If you want to open even the smallest company, the most sensible thing was just open like a small office space. Okay, Even though it's like a single person startup, most people got an office as soon as they can. Now, startups, some of them don't even have offices. Like their mailing address is like a random P.O. box or like their own residential home. In fact, most of the action that's happening in the tech scene is fully online. This is why Zoom is more popular than ever before. Slack, people like it. And online working is the norm right now. So negative 40% is a big deal. And guess what? This isn't over just yet. Like I said before, commercial is not recovering anytime soon. If you guys think commercial is recovering, really think about it, okay? Look into some of these numbers. It's not great. It's pretty ugly. Now, San Francisco offices are getting emptier every single day. This is not a small market. San Francisco in the Bay Area has probably a massive market in the commercial industry. And those the hundreds of skyscrapers in the Bay Area, they account for a huge chunk of the U.S. commercial real estate market, and they're worth way more. Like a single building in San Francisco in the past is worth more than commercial real estate prices in some suburban areas. Just one tower is worth more than like several towers in other cities. Now the value is low. We're seeing the biggest discount was 80% off for a San Francisco skyscraper. The lowest discount was 40%. And you're probably wondering why is the discount so high for commercial real estate? It's because a lot of people know that the city is probably not gonna recover because one, people are moving online. Two, people have already moved out to Las Vegas, Austin, and Miami and set up a shop. Skills, for example, is a multi-billion dollar gaming industry company. They moved to Las Vegas quietly. They didn't say a single peep. They just ripped off their lease. They moved to Las Vegas and they set up shop 40 to 50,000 square feet. And they did it really quietly. They didn't complain about San Francisco. They didn't talk bad about San Francisco. They just packed up and left after seeing how San Francisco is handling things. Now, the city is pretty crazy, in my opinion, because nothing has really been changed despite so many people leaving. And this is actually happening to a lot of U.S. cities, right? You know, a lot of homelessness, a lot of crime, and a lot of times these cities don't do anything and people leave. So you can't just blame online work. In fact, a lot of cities, even Seattle, San Diego, is facing a lot of stuff like crime, increased homelessness, homeless encampments everywhere. 
it's a massive turnoff for people, and people are actually leaving for areas like the Midwest, Miami, for example. Guess what? Miami commercial real estate is probably one of the only places in the U.S. where prices are actually holding steady, and that's actually crazy. Okay, because I've always thought commercial real estate is dropping on all big cities, but Miami is one of the few exceptions where a lot of the commercial real estate properties are still being built, and some commercial properties are even going up in value. But 90% of the locations in the U.S. commercial real estate is facing a massive downturn, and nobody's buying these properties. Even New York City, with the amount of international demand, is actually showcasing that offices are not the way to go. We're seeing vacancy rates in Manhattan at a record 22.7% and will stay above 20% through 2026. Now, here's the thing about Manhattan. This is a place where a lot of international investors are. California is actually getting very few international investors, but Manhattan and New York City in general is still getting a lot of, for example, Middle Eastern buyers. They're still getting a lot of European buyers, a lot of Chinese buyers. Manhattan especially, people like buying property here. But now, despite pretty cheap prices, we're not really seeing a lot of investors going for commercial. Residential is doing fine. In fact, Manhattan vacancies are getting so bad in its multi-decade history that they're actually turning some of these commercial properties to apartments. And remember, not every building can be turned into commercial properties. I mean, residential properties, because some commercial buildings are built different so changing them will not only cost 800 to 1200 per square feet but it's nearly impossible to break even and make a profit so this is why you're going to be seeing a lot of commercial real estate properties staying completely empty and the ones that do sell are the ones that be changing into residential now the commercial real estate sector in manhattan is something to definitely pay close attention to new york city is still one of the cities where there's just still a massive inflow of people because of the bank industry and even a small tech scene coming up so manhattan still great okay it's still you know the big apple people still like it but commercial real estate is something that's getting more fuzzy every single day analysts are saying that boise's commercial real estate is at the lowest since 2012 and 2012 is actually the time when we finally got ourselves out of the 08 crisis and you do see that a lot of deals are being closed but they're still very low compared to history, and a lot of the deals being closed are very cheap. A lot of the pandemic boom towns like Boise and Denver are experiencing some of the greatest decreases in real estate values, and vacancies are flying through the roof. It seems like a lot of people are willing to move online. That's what's happening. Okay, companies are worth just 100, 200 million dollars or above are more than willing to work online. We're seeing the rise of remote work even in the pharmaceutical industry, remote work for the financial industry. My roommate in the past, he recently got a fantastic job at an insurance company making six figs, and he's just simply working online. And this is why we're getting a rise of digital nomads. A lot of these people are no longer working in the office, but making high income and living in a cheap vacation area, and they're living a the life, okay? No more grinding nine to five at the office. Grind nine to five on the computer and then living at a beach is the way to go. And that's why everyone is leaving. People don't even want to buy houses in some big cities. They just want to be digital nomads and live a cheap and very well-off life. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment below. And before guys leave, definitely check out the private Discord server, guys. Patreon link below for some amazing trades. We trade live on a daily basis every single day. And Wolverine Trader is actually making a lot of money here. Like, for example, this week, Amazon AMD Coin Palantir all made money. The only one that lost money was, you know, Spy, but it would have made money for hell longer. And all the trades are live. So check us out. It's only 10 bucks. Patreon link below.